On the morning of April 14th, 1912, a priest by the name of Father Thomas Bryles celebrated Mass for the second and third class passengers on the Titanic. And during that Mass, he gave a homily where he told the passengers to be sure that they had a spiritual lifeboat for when the shipwrecks of temptation and trial would enter into their lives. Little did he know that later that night, he himself would become that spiritual lifeboat for many of these passengers. When after the Titanic hit the iceberg in the early hours of April 15th and was sinking, Father Bryles, according to reports, multiple times was offered a spot on one of the lifeboats, and each and every time he was offered it, he refused it. And he stayed behind on the rear deck of the Titanic, ministering to his people, hearing confessions and offering absolution in what would be these people's final hours. In the very early hours of July 30th, 1945, the USS Indianapolis was steaming towards the Philippines in the middle of the Pacific Theater in World War II, when it was struck by a group of Japanese submarines and hit with a torpedo. Almost immediately, the ship went to the bottom of the ocean, carrying 300 of its 1,100 sailors with it. The remaining eight to 900 sailors were left in the ocean in the middle of the Pacific, many even without life jackets. The chaplain of that ship, Father Thomas Conway, born, believe it or not, right here in Waterbury, Connecticut, would spend the next few hours swimming, even though he wasn't a strong swimmer, from group to group of sailors offering them comfort, giving many of them last rites, and offering them the assurance that they were not alone as they drifted off in the middle of the Pacific. On September 4th, 1967, a group of Marines from the 5th Battalion of the 1st Marines were pinned down in the Quezon Valley. And hearing that, the, that this unit was about to be overrun by enemy soldiers, an unarmed priest named Father Vincent Cappadano ran into the fire. And he began to go from soldier to marine to sailor, offering them last rites. And when he himself was shot in the hand and in the arm and in the legs, he refused medical treatment. And he continued to go from marine to soldier to sailor to offer them last rites until he finally was going towards a few marines only a few yards from an enemy machine gun that would finally take his life. These three priests, Father Conway, Father Bryles, and Father Cappadano, did what we can all agree, I think, are fairly extraordinary acts of human bravery and courage. In fact, for his actions, Father Cappadano would be awarded our nation's highest honor, the Congressional Medal of Honor. But these same three men who were committing at this time extraordinary acts of heroism were, when you think about it, committing very ordinary acts of priesthood. You see, the priesthood is the living promise that Jesus is the good shepherd who never abandons his flock. That even in the midst of the most unimaginable circumstances, when we see a priest, we know that Jesus himself is here for us. We know that he has not abandoned us. We know that we can rely on him when the wolves of this world are knocking at our door. We know when we see a priest that when the wolf of sin has taken hold of my heart, that I can go to him and receive the forgiveness that God has promised that flows from the cross. I know when I see the priest that when I experience moments of loneliness, moments of temptation, that I can be assured that because of the priesthood, Jesus remains present to me, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. 
And when the wolf of my final hours is knocking at my door, it is the priest who comes to prepare my soul to meet my heavenly Father in heaven. This is the power of the good shepherd living in the midst of his church through his priests. You see, all of these priests, if you had met them on an ordinary day, you wouldn't necessarily think anything extraordinary about them. You all know Father Dunn and myself, and the funny thing is, is we're fairly average, ordinary guys. But the priesthood is a gift that enables us to do something that the world looks at and in many ways sees as extraordinary. Laying down the entirety of our lives to save the people that God has sent us to serve, to minister to them, to lay aside our own dreams, our own desires, so that we can be here all the time for you. This is actually, if you think about it, how many of you have ever wondered why we have a rectory? Why priests just don't go out and get their own apartments and commute in like everybody else does? Because the priest living in the midst of his parish is the sign that Jesus himself lives in the midst of his parish. That Jesus himself is present in the midst of his church through the persons of his priests. And this is why it is so important as we celebrate today Good Shepherd Sunday and the World Day of Prayer for Vocations, this is why we must pray and pray and pray for priests. That God will continue to send new and abundant laborers for his harvest. Because when we hear about the shortage of vocations to the priesthood, we shouldn't be worried that there's not going to be there, someone there to call the plumber when the pipes leak in the middle of the night. And we shouldn't worry that there's not going to be someone there to sign the check that needs to pay the bills to keep the lights on, although sometimes that's what we do. We should be worried because when the priest is gone, we feel something of the presence of God has gone from our lives. And so we need the presence of God. The wolves of this world are constantly at the door. The wolves of this world are constantly trying to take us and to capture us and to scatter us. But the priesthood is the very promise of God that the wolves will not be successful. That the wolves of this world will be overcome by the constant presence of God among his people. And so I stand before you as humbly and as ordinary as I can to ask you for your prayers. You see, when Jesus offered himself on the cross, the sacrifice for our salvation, it cost a life. The presence of God that furthers our salvation in this world is no less expensive. It costs the life of each and every priest, of each and every man who says yes to this awesome but heroic life that God has called us to. And so I ask you for your prayers, for me, for Father Dunn, that we may have the courage to continue to govern wisely the flock that he has entrusted to our care. That we, after the example of so many priests like Father Conway and Father Bryles and Father Capadano, may not hesitate to continue to lay down our lives that you all might have eternal life. And I ask that you continue to pray for new priests, to pray for more and more young men to rise up and say, yes, I will be that promise. I will be the presence of God in the midst of his flock.